and I'm live. Welcome to the very first instalment of Off the Lead and Out of My Mind, which is going to be a series of solo episodes of the Off the Lead podcast. Today being Ash Wednesday and the first day of Lent, the first day of 40 days and 40 nights of, of sacrifice, which I highly recommend anybody listening get on basically J- jump on that bandwagon jump on the lent bandwagon like this is the the first day of lent it's oh fuck happy valentine's day 14th of february but if you're listening to this and it's the 21st of february say doesn't matter just start i'll be on episode 7 of 40 so it doesn't matter so whenever you're tuning into this whether it's you know today being the the first day of lent february the 14th or the fucking 30th of February, or whatever. Jump on the Lent bandwagon. And don't necessarily give up anything. People are hung up about this idea of giving something up, which I personally don't really think is as effective as starting something. So, me that loves my analogies. If you want to give up sweets for Lent, because Jesus went off into the desert for 40 days and 40 nights and didn't have any sweets... So if you want to do that, my advice is don't. My advice is commit to doing something as opposed to not doing something. Because if you decide not to eat sweets and chocolate for 40 days, that means that depending on how much you love your chocolate, it could be as often as every five minutes you'll be saying to yourself, okay, don't eat that. Okay, don't eat that. Don't don't eat that. And you're never satiated, if that's the right word. You're never satisfied when you don't have something. So you come home from the evening, you see a bar of chocolate in the fucking fridge or a packet of crisps in the press or whatever it is, pick your poison. And you say, nope, Lent, not eating it. And then, you know, 20 minutes later, you're like, ooh, yeah, no, it's Lent. No, not eating it. And then fucking half an hour later, it's like, ooh, it's the first day, you know. And then you start, the excuses start rolling in. You know, I'll kind of start properly tomorrow. I'll, I'll reduce my chocolate intake down to only 10% of what it usually would be because, you know, it's today. and That bastardizes the whole process. There's no element of sacrifice there at all, really. You're just torturing yourself. And what it does, I think, is it causes a load of anxiety because people feel like losers when they don't commit to what it is that they're doing. And that's, that's really unfair, I think. Really unfair to, to yourself. It's, it's, it's almost a... In a weird way, it's a, it's, a, it's a form of cruelty. Committing to something that deep down inside you probably know you're not going to fulfil, but yet you commit to it anyway, and maybe you post it on Facebook. Give it up the fags for Lent. You know, how often have you seen somebody put up, back on the fags, 147 days today. You don't see it, so save yourself the needless anxiety and use I suppose what you would call your approach circuitry in your brain and do something as opposed to stopping doing something so let's say it's chocolate just in keeping with that analogy chocolate or sweets or sugar or whatever it is don't give it up commit to eating half a kilogram of vegetables a day you eat half a kg of vegetables every day for 40 days and 40 nights see how much of a fucking appetite you have for chocolate and sweets and shite basically You'd be too full. Far too fucking full. And that's what that's what kills people, I think, on diets. Because they they have it in their head that they have to eat less. And, you know, that's not the worst of rules. It just depends on, on what it is that you actually are eating. But if you're eating less, you're hungrier more. And when you think about that, there's such a paradox there. You're trying to reduce the amount you eat by making yourself hungrier. So don't torture yourself giving up stuff like that. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not lost on the idea of sacrifice. I think sacrifice is a very good idea, and I think Lent serves a very good purpose. And I think it's no it's no accident that Lent is at this time of year, because I think you've dusted off the cobwebs of Christmas, spring is in the air, there's that stretch of the evening that Joe was getting the first week of February, you know, things are things are kind of looking up and it's time to maybe remind yourself of the good things in life just before you come into the longer evenings and the warmer weather and the crops and, you know, the World Cup or fucking whatever it is that's on during the summers.
But in relation to sacrifice, if you decide to say which... I'm actually going to do two things, I think. I'm going to try and commit to 20 minutes a day meditating and this podcast. How long this podcast is going to last, I don't know. Well, sorry, apologies. It will last the 40 days and 40 nights of that, I can fucking assure you. But, well, I say that so confidently now. I'll listen back to this episode and go, oh, yeah, maybe not so much. Maybe on the way and all that jazz. Business to run and commitments, family and everything else. But in relation to the specific time of each podcast... I don't know, looking down, I've done five and a half minutes fairly effortlessly. The irony in not being able to pronounce the word effortlessly. The sacrifice is there nonetheless, because if I commit to, take the meditation example, or take something that you're going to do, you're going to walk a kilometre a day, you're going to run 5k a day, you know, pick your poison, whatever it is, whatever you're committing to doing. You might say that whatever you're doing, you're not, that's not a sacrifice. But if I'm meditating for 20 minutes every day, for those 20 minutes, I'm not doing what I would have been doing otherwise. And therein lies the sacrifice. So I suppose you're, you're, getting, you're getting double the benefit. You're getting all the benefit from the sacrifice of giving something up, but you're also getting all the benefit from using that approach circuitry, that dopaginergic... I think that's the word. Basically, the, the, the brain function that produces dopamine, a, essentially a feel-good hormone or neurochemical. I really have to brush up my neurology. And that's another thing. I've been asking myself, what the fuck am I going to talk to every day for 40 days? And the worst-case scenario, I'll pick something like brain chemistry. And I'll just, I'll do a little bit of research, you know, I'll just brush up on a couple of the basics. The, and by basics, I mean the absolute fundamentals. Um, no groundbreaking research, stuff that we've known forever. Pick a Wikipedia page, basically, and just give you the gist of it. I think that could be a kind of a, a, kind of a cool thing. Like, I've heard people say before that they're... You know, reading a page a day during Lent, this is obviously coming from people who aren't big readers, but they'll they read a page a day or they commit to a new word a day. Little things, and you might say that they're trivial, but they're a hell of a lot less trivial than not doing anything like everybody. So if you're really at a loss as what to do, listening to this podcast every day for 40 days, I know that might sound very self-serving of me, but fuck it, I'm here to promote the whole fucking thing. 15 years sales experience will do that to a man. But it is a kind of an easy get out. Listen to this every day and fuck knows you might learn something. And it's not going to be overly highbrow, convoluted stuff. It's, it's going to be really basic stuff. And it's going to be stuff that I like. So if you've been listening to these conversations that I've been having with people, you're, odds are you're going to fucking like the kind of content that I'm, I'm spitting out too. This particular episode being one of 40 is a lot more off the cuff, I think, than the others will be. But then again, I don't know, and that's the beauty of this. Like, I, I'm saying if I run out of things to talk to, I resort to, you know, a Wikipedia page. And I'm not just going to recite it. I'm going to, you know, I read it two or three times, and then I'll and then I'll repeat it from memory. So I'll get whatever new bits I've picked up, and I'll get what I would have known already, and give that to, a, give that to you in a format such as this that I think you might be able to get I don't know if I've spoken about this in the podcast and again this this off the lead out of my mind series call it is going to give me the opportunity to talk about certain things that I haven't been able to talk about not that I haven't been able to but when I get somebody on I want to talk to them about whatever they bring up essentially or whatever they say might jolt my memory to to ask them about or they, they'll say one thing and it'll make me think of something else and, I, and I'll ask that I don't want to be I don't want to be artificially inseminating my conversations with topics that I want to cover if that makes sense so epigenetics is something that I'm I'm very much so interested in as is free will free will is probably one I'll start with or it'll be definitely one of the earlier ones or maybe I'll leave it till later on in the in the forty days to give it its due because it's a 
It's a complicated one, I suppose, when you really get into the weeds of it. But I reckon that if it's... I reckon if I understand it well enough that I can explain it well enough. And there's a great saying that, I'm, that I love, me that loves my little saying, but if you can't explain something to an eight-year-old, you don't understand it. And I, and I really love that. And you'll often hear from people who don't really know what they're talking about. They'll say things like, oh, look, you, I, I, I did four years in college, Frano. Uh, you know, I, I can't just explain this to you in a couple of minutes. Okay, you don't know what you're fucking talking about then. But again, this this solo this solo podcasting business will give me an opportunity to talk about just stuff that I wish people knew more about, I suppose. Um, and again, as always, if I say something and it resonates with you, or maybe it doesn't, maybe you don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, maybe you don't know why I'm motivated to do what I'm doing, and maybe you're right, because maybe I don't. But in the same way that I need a guest to have a back and forth with, I need listeners, and particularly regular listeners, to, I suppose, help me on my journey or our journey, if that's not too fucking, insert appropriate word here. The word escapes me, as they, as they tend to do. But I'm going to try and, I suppose, with, this, with these solo episodes, and apologies if I'm rambling here, but I'm just trying to give people a taste for what it is that I'm planning to do, and indeed give myself a taste for what it is that I have to do, because I, I really do squeeze these podcasts into an unbelievably busy schedule. I'm up to fucking 90 with work, with a, a fiancé who's about to drop a baby in the next you know five or six weeks, and life on top of that. The same life that fucking everybody else has. All your trials and tribulations, I have all that. And this idea of kind of starting a, a one-man fucking movement. Um, and that's something I want to move away from as well. I feel, I feel like it's a one-man movement. But I know it's fucking not because I know how many people are listening. And I know how many people who never miss a fucking second. And that's reassuring. Very reassuring. There's people that I have never met. That I've never heard of. All over Ireland. And all over the world, essentially. And they never miss a fucking second. And that's fucking unbelievable. It's fantastic, and it's it's a real it's a real source of energy. I suppose it's it's fair to say, and it's the reason I'm still doing what I'm doing. But what would be great would be to have a relationship of sorts with you guys. And uh, as I say that, I sound like the you know the musician starting out who wants everybody to come to their gigs and you know wants to come up and sign autographs, and then when it takes off the way they intended to take off they're like oh yeah not so much <laughs> stay away from my giant mansion but then again this podcast isn't I was about to say it isn't a money making enterprise it fucking is it absolutely is not yet not by any stretch of the imagination this has cost me far more money than I'm going to make in the foreseeable future but I, and this is another topic that I probably will cover is, is my thoughts on charity. I'm not a fan of charity. I'm really not a fan of charity. I think charity has a... I think people have the wrong idea of what charity is or at least should be. To me, giving somebody something for nothing serves no purpose other than you know they don't starve to death. Or I was about to say they don't have a roof over their head. I don't know about, and again, this is why this particular charity or this particular topic needs its own episode. But yeah, emergency shelter, yeah, a hundred percent. Like you know, if the, the 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 classic example that comes to mind, there's some fucking bastard who's either beaten his wife or his kids or both, and they have to flee. They need fucking shelter, and there should be an abundance of beds for those type types of people. That's emergency. That that's akin to you know feeding somebody who's starving, and I suppose emergency services should be charities. Maybe that's a good way of looking at it. That's not well defined by any stretch of the imagination. That's literally off the lead and out of my mind. Um, but I think for for the purposes of this recording, it, it it fits in nicely that charity should be for emergency services. So you know, donate money so that. When everything else fails, not everything has failed. There's you, you resort to charity. But I think these days, increasingly, charity is becoming a thing that 
people rely on it as opposed to it being a last resort. And that, I think, I don't know, it kind of, it ruins the whole point. Like, I see the same with social welfare. Social welfare is not seen as a safety net anymore. It's seen as, you know, part of what you need to have to exist. Like, you, you couldn't be without your social welfare because then you wouldn't be able to pay your fucking mortgage or your fucking bills or for your food or your kids' fucking books or whatever it is. And as soon as something like social welfare, which is essentially a form of charity, as soon as that becomes a requirement in kind of daily life and not as a, as a safety net or as a, as a seatbelt, you know, something that you use when everything goes fucking terribly, it loses its fucking purpose. It's, it's, not, it's not even a striving to be what it is or should be or is supposed to be. And that's why this podcast won't solely rely on uh, donations via Patreon. There will be merchandise. I've mentioned before about you know selling stuff that people are buying anywhere, disposable stuff. I'll get into branded stuff as well. Like I, you'll hear me talk about how I'm opposed to brands. You know this idea of paying ninety euro for a T-shirt because it's got the right fucking logo on it. That's preposterous. That's absolutely fucking ridiculous. But if you're getting behind an organisation, say, let's say it's a, a political party that you're a big fan of, and they sell t-shirts with their logo on it just as a hypothetical example that's a branded product but that's a branded product that you fucking believe in and that's a branded product that you want to share with the world so that's a great product and I'd like to think that there's a certain amount of social and political activism in what I'm doing or at least what I'm going to do and if you haven't kind of maybe cop that or if I haven't made that explicit I suppose I'm, I'm beginning to feel a little bit more of a of the activist coming out in me because essentially my main motivation or one of them at least for starting these conversations is I'm just fucking fed up with what I see everywhere all the time society wide it's I was going to say it's not good it's better than it's ever been before and that's some that's something that's not really promoted I mean when was the last time you heard a bit of good news on what's called the news and if I haven't mentioned this to you before stop listening to it disengage with traditional media stop listening to the radio stop listening to tv stop watching the news stop hearing every fucking half hour update stop it all you've no business talking about politics in my humble opinion if you don't understand human beings if you haven't got a reasonable grounding in something like psychology, you've no business having an opinion on fucking politics because that's like doing... Uh, to me, that's like doing uh, theoretical physics when you can't add and subtract. You're just... You're missing, you're missing far too much. You can't be an expert in uh, the Iraq War, say, if you don't understand the First and Second World War. You just, you just can't. But anyway, I digress. Um, hopefully the next podcast will be not as, not as tangential, not as all over the place. This was the first, so I'm going to cut myself a break. But moving forward, I do hope to have a little bit more structure. I'd at least, at the very least, have a couple of things written down, points that I want to cover. But as I said, this was an introductory episode. There's going to be one. This is going to be number one of 40. And after that, would I do a daily one? I don't know. It depends on how well this goes. But I am committing to it. So if in 20 days this is just a complete ball of shite, get ready for another 20 days. Nobody's forcing anybody to listen. If this doesn't float your boat like my other conversations have, you know, there's no obligation on you. There's no one... I'm not saying if you don't embrace the solo podcast that you can't listen to the other podcast. Listen to whatever the fuck you want, okay? But this is something that I'm committing to. And if you do tune in every day, or even if you've just subscribed or liked or saved the Authorly podcast to your fucking podcast homepage or whatever it is, 
even just even just seeing every day or as often as you check that I have a new episode up every day, it might just remind you, just that little click, fuck yeah, I'm supposed to be doing 20 push-ups every day. And that's a good one. But there's one for you. If, if Asking people to meditate for 20 minutes a day is a big ask when you don't know what meditation is. And I, I, I would like to think that the overwhelming, or not like to think, but I do think that the overwhelming majority of people don't know what, don't know what meditation is, don't know what its purpose is, don't know the first fucking first thing about it, because I've been hearing about it and reading about it for fucking 10 years, and I think I'm only kind of getting to grips with what it is now, and I might do an episode on that, I've got fucking 40 days to, to talk about different things, meditation could very well be one of them, at the very least I'll update you on how I'm going to get on, because as well as doing this episode every day for 40 days, I'm going to throw my hat at meditating for about 20 minutes every day, and that's in the back of Ivor's advice, sound advice I think to give it a go I told him I didn't at the time and he said Frano you can squeeze in five minutes for it and I kind of went fuck you're right so yeah push ups if, if you're at a loose end as to what you're going to do do 20 push ups every day for 40 days and 40 nights if you can't do one if you can't you know get into that what do they call it a plank position and bend your elbows until your chest more or less hits the ground but doesn't touch the ground and then push back up if you can't do that movement Physically, if you can't do one, go on your knees and cross your legs. So go down on all fours and put one foot over the other ankle, say. And do the push-up with your knees on the ground. And do 20 of them. If you can't do two in a row, either regular ones or ones on your knees, then do one now. And then do one in fucking 20 minutes. But squeeze in the 20 in the day. If you can't do 20 straight, don't go on your knees. So what people will do is they'll get to 15 proper push-ups and then they'll go on their knees and do the other five. Do do that if that's what works for you. If you're if you're doing your push-ups, let's say, before you get in the shower or whatever, not that you should be sweating that much, if at all, from 20 push-ups. But if you are, then yeah, go down on your knees and do the remaining push-ups. If the remaining push-ups is 19, so be it. But fucking do it. Do it in whatever way you can. Do it in whatever way you can sustain it. So don't go and do 20 push-ups and fucking injure yourself so you can't do it for the next week. Okay? But just commit to doing them. You'll feel better. You'll look better. You will be better. You will be stronger. It's working out your your pecs, essentially, if if you're a guy... Presumably the same kind of thing for a girl. I don't know if push-ups are advisable for a girl. I think girly push-ups are when you keep your knees in the ground, so maybe that's one for the girls. I don't fucking know. If you're interested in doing it and you're a girl, Google push-ups for women. I don't fucking know. There's my daily dose of misogynistic tendencies right there. (laughs) But yeah, pick push-ups. And if you can do something better than 30 or 20 push-ups, you know, or maybe push-ups don't float your boat for whatever reason, do something else, but do commit to something. And if you're at a loss, do 20 push-ups before you don't do anything. Because in 40 days, you'll be fucking delighted you've done it. And if you're jumping into this halfway through and you're on episode 20 or 40, start now. And when you finish the 40 days, maybe go back to fucking episode 1 and listen through. Or not. What fucking ever. Just do something. Specifically, do something. As opposed to stop doing something. Now, I'm finding myself blabbering here. So, I'm going to call it a day at that. The email address, as always, is I'm off the lead at gmail.com. Send me a Facebook message if that's handier. Like, subscribe, comment, share, review. All that shit helps. And thanks for